Hey everybody, it's Brad here, the creator of Expanse, the volumetric skies plugin for Unity. And today I'm gonna to show you how to get started with Expanse if you've never used it before. We're gonna set up a sample project, we're gonna bring Expanse in, and we're gonna mess around with some of the controls to give you a feel for how you might integrate Expanse with your project on a high level. I'm gonna try and keep this video short, so let's go. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the HDRP empty template. I'm gonna use Unity version 2021.2.4F1, but you can use Unity version 2020.1.17 or greater, and Expanse should work just fine. And Expanse only works in the high definition render pipeline, HDRP. So if you're using URP or the built-in render pipeline, I'm sorry, but Expanse won't work. So we'll just wait while Unity creates this new project for us. Do this in the meantime. You ever use one of these things before? I don't really know why you would use these, what use this has for most people. Do you think you're supposed to use it like this, like that? Or do you think you're supposed to go like that? That seems way harder. Okay, so now Unity has created the project. We have three options here. We can do HDRP, HDRP and VR, or HDRP and DXR, which means HDRP and ray tracing. Expanse will work with any of these. For VR, you need to make sure that it's set up in single pass instance mode. I'm just gonna select HDRP here. And now I have my basic scene. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import Expanse. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna to go to Window, Package Manager, and I'm going to select Packages, My Assets. And if you've bought Expanse, then it should show up here. So here's Expanse. I'm going to click Import. You might need to click Update. It might say Update over here. Um, I'm just gonna click import. I have the latest version. Right now that's 1.5.9. And now it's gonna show you uh, what you can import. You gotta make sure that all of it's selected and then click import. Great, so Expanse is now imported into our project. You'll see we'll have some shader warnings that crop up from the first time that it compiles, but that's okay. So now we can actually set up Expanse in our little test scene here. But I wanna do a couple things first to prepare the scene for Expanse. When you bring Expanse into a scene, it'll automatically create directional lights for the sun and the moon celestial bodies. So we're gonna actually take the sun directional light right here and we are just going to delete it. Um, and then we're also going to delete the sky and fog volume from this default scene because Expanse will create one of those too. If you have two sky and fog volumes in your scene, Expanse might not work. So we need to delete it. And then the last thing I'm gonna do before we bring Expanse in is I'm gonna to go to the main camera and I'm gonna set the far clipping plane to be something like 30,000. Expanse's fog and aerial perspective get computed out to the far clipping plane. So for them to work properly, the far clipping plane needs to be relatively far away. So between 20 and 100,000. Great, so now our scene is ready for Expanse. The way I'm gonna add Expanse to the scene is I'm gonna right click in the hierarchy, go to Expanse, Full Skies, and then you'll see I have a few options here. We're gonna pick the Creative Sky because it's the easiest one to work with. The Advanced Sky has controls that are a little bit harder to understand, but it'll give you more control if you really need to do something unique. But for 90% of cases, the Creative Sky will work just fine. So I'm gonna click Creative Sky, It'll take a little while the first time you load it in to recompile shaders. And hopefully after 30 seconds to a minute and a half, you'll see Expanse rendering in your scene, some nice volumetric clouds uh, and the sun over here. Um, now, this to me looks a little bit dim right now. It, it looks like it's too dark. And the reason for this is that the camera's exposure parameter is probably not set right. Uh, the way that we can fix this is we can right click over in our hierarchy, go to volume, and click global volume. We can create a new volume profile by clicking new, and then we can add an exposure override. This will let us tweak the camera's exposure and make it uh, either higher or lower. My recommended exposure setup for Expanse is to click automatic um, and make the minimum somewhere around seven and the maximum somewhere around 12 or 12.5. Great, so now that our exposure is set up and we have things looking roughly the way that we want from the camera's perspective, we can actually dig into what the different components of Expanse are and how you can play around with them and use them to get the look that you want. Um, so we can open up the Expanse Creative Sky game object and we'll see a bunch of different uh, things here that are all labeled according to what they do. The first thing is the time of day controller. It has a time that you can specify from script or in this game object. 
and it will simulate uh, the real time of day uh, on a particular date, uh, the sun position, the moon position, and where the stars are. So we can uh, use the minutes thing to, you know, parameter to move around the sun, and put it over the horizon, uh, and then the moon comes up. If the moon's not up for you, you can change the day of the year, and that will change what phase the moon is in. So by default, Expanse doesn't tick the time of day. And, uh, and the reason for this is that I think a good open world game setup should have its own notion of the time of day, and it should use that to control Expanse uh, through the date time controller. Uh, if you want something that will tick the time of day for you, you can add the tick time of day script to Expanse, uh, and, and you can just add that to the date time controller block, uh, and you can, uh, you can drag it into the time controller setting, and then you can control how fast you want it to go. And this won't run in the editor, this will only run in play mode. But if we hit play, you'll see now that the time of day is being changed dynamically. The next thing to take a look at is the atmosphere component. Um, this will let you control the color of the atmosphere and some other parameters like how much, uh, how dense the ozone layer is and how thick the atmosphere is. If you play around with the ozone parameter, it sort of adds a purple tinge to the sky. One is physically accurate for Earth. And the thickness parameter will sort of give us, uh, you know, thinner or like thicker, almost kind of like weirdly alien looking thing going on. One is the right setting for Earth. And then we can play around with, with the daytime color and the sunset color. So the, the daytime color, um, you know, if we adjust that, we can change the color of the sky. Um, and then similarly, the sunset color, which is most visible when the sun is kind of lower on the horizon, we can play around with and we can make it more saturated, we can make it redder. Um, you know, we can do all sorts of things to artistically override how it actually looks. Um, I'm gonna leave it at the default settings for now. Now, you might complain that neither of these parameters sounds very physically based, uh, but they both are. And any combination of parameters that you choose for the daytime and the sunset color is going to respond correctly to the lighting in the scene, the directional light, the different celestial bodies you have, and it'll represent a plausible alien atmosphere. The next thing to take a look at is the fog component. Um, Expanse's fog is relatively easy to use. It's pretty similar to Unity's in that it specifies a visibility distance um, and a thickness and a radius. The visibility distance is how far out you can see through the fog. So if I pull that in, you can see that it gets denser. And if I push it out, then it's less dense. The radius controls the maximum distance that the fog will render out to. If I set the visibility distance lower, but set this to something like 5,000, you can see that the further away clouds are a little bit more visible. If I set this to 1,000, they're even more visible. And then the thickness is how far the fog extends off of the base of the ground. So if I set this to something like 200, you can see that it's mostly concentrated around the horizon line. Uh, here, let me turn off the grid. Um, and if I set it to something like 1200, then it comes very far up. So I'm gonna set something like 500. The smog parameter controls how smoggy the fog looks. You can just sort of drag that around and you can see it goes from bright to very dark. Real world aerosols, this value is about 0.1. And then the glare parameter lets you control the spread of the halo around the sun that the, that the fog has. So if I set, turn this all the way down, you can see that you know there's no glare around the sun, turn it all the way up and it gets very extreme. Um, a value around 0 0.6, 0 0.7 is about what you would expect to see in the real world. Before we're done with fog, I wanna bring your attention to two other parameters here. Uh, if you feel like the fog doesn't look bright enough, then you can come into the layers drop down here and see the atmosphere layer, the more advanced thing that that fog game object is controlling. Um, and here, you can adjust the multiple scattering multiplier and the ambient multiplier and these things will brighten the fog if you turn them up. So you can see if I adjust the multiple scattering multiplier, it makes the fog brighter, and the ambient makes the fog bluer and also brighter. Great, the next thing to take a look at is the volumetric clouds. Um, these are pretty easy to interact with, and the reason for that is that you can just open up the preset browser, and Expanse has a bunch of presets that you can choose from. 
Uh, they're all displayed here. They all have images. Um, and, uh, and so you can just click one um, and it will load it for you. So here's some different examples. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much what you do. Below that, you have the modeling tab, and this controls sort of some high-level things about the clouds, like how much they cover the sky. Um, and uh, you can also swirl them around a little bit. And this is sort of an interesting thing to animate for your clouds. Um, and then you can control how fast they move across the sky with the wind parameter. So this is them moving faster, um, and this is them moving slower. And if you further want to tweak the way that your clouds look and are illuminated by the sun, you can go to the lighting section. And here you'll find parameters like density, which will sort of make them wispier versus more solid. Um, you'll find the shadowing parameter, which will increase how much self-shadowing they have. Uh, the ambient parameter, which will uh, make them bluer or less blue. Um, how much multiple scattering to use, which will make them brighter. Uh, and then also the silver lining. Uh, parameter, which can help to create a brighter sort of halo around the sun where the clouds are. Um, and then finally, the raininess parameter, which will darken the clouds. Now, say that you've messed around with these parameters a little bit and you like the way that things look and you want to save this as a preset, that's super easy. You just pop into the preset browser, click save preset, type in a name. I'm going to call this tutorial, hit save, and then it will save the image that is in your game view. So now if I click refresh library, scroll all the way down, you'll see I have the tutorial preset and I can load it up. All right, the next things to look at are the sun and moon game objects. These are pretty self-explanatory. Um, that You can do things like change the size of the sun, how big it is, how small it is. Um, you can change how bright the sun is. Um, 150,000 is a good value for Earth. Um, you can change how bright the sun disk is. So for instance, if you brought it sort of low to the horizon right here, and you wanted it to peak through the clouds more, you could up this to 10. Um, and then you can also tint the disk, tint the light, um, uh, et cetera, make things look really crazy. The controls for the moon are similar. If you bring it down here, look at the moon, you can change the size how bright the light is, uh, etc. The real physical luminance of the moon is somewhere around 15. Um, this is very dark and it requires you setting a really, really aggressively low exposure setting to get things to look right. So in lots of games, they actually make the moon somewhere around 200 for the luminance. Um, but you can do what you want to do there and do what works for you. And the final thing to take a look at is Expanse models a procedural star field, um, and we can adjust that with the stars game object. We can control how dense the stars are. Um, we can control their size on average, and we can also make them brighter. So now you, let's say you've got your sky looking how you want it to, but it's taking a little bit long to render, it's causing hitches, etc. Um, the place where you can go and performance optimize is the quality settings underneath base settings. And this will give you a number of trade-offs that you can use to sort of change uh, how performant the sky is. You can, for instance, choose not to render cloud reflections. You can uh, decrease the quality of the cloud shadow map. Um, you can render the clouds at a lower resolution. Um, now, this is a lot to go over, and it's a, frankly too much for this short video. So if you want to learn how to optimize Expanse for a production-ready environment, I recommend that you watch this video. It's about an hour long, but it will go over everything that you need to know about optimizing Expanse to hit your target frame rate. Now, that's all of the features of the Expanse Creative Sky, and I promise you that if you use the Advanced Sky and you read some of the documentation, you'll be able to do way more advanced stuff than just the simple things we've done here. However, for lots of games, all you need is just a good looking earth sky and the creative sky will get you there in an art directable fashion 90% of the time. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. I hope this video was helpful. If you're looking for more detailed guides on how to use Expanse, 
then I would recommend checking out the documentation, which is really detailed and has different examples. And I would also recommend checking out the different videos on this channel, which will show you more advanced ways to use Expanse to get things to look exactly how you want. You can also come and drop by our Discord server, which I'll put a link to in the description and ask any questions that you want. We got lots of people doing all sorts of different stuff who have experience with Expanse who can help you out. But for now, I'll say thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.